Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Therefore, have no care for the morrow. Let the things of the morrow take care of themselves. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Do you like that quote? I mean, the first part's nice, but we got enough evil? We got to be focused on evil, Lord? Well, thank goodness this is the middle section of the Sermon on the Mountain. We have a lot of other good things coming in the next part. But yeah, it comes after the phrase that opens up the Arcana Celestia. When Swedenborg was finished writing the earlier books that, as the Lord's opening his spiritual mind, he wrote a thing called the Word Explained. He wrote some other books. He's written a lot of philosophy. And then, and then there seemed to be this shifting moment where now these are the books that we generally understand to be the inspired teachings of the second coming. And the flyleaf, the opening line is, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. And then followed by, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Well, where were you sitting? What were you doing a week ago today? This is Sunday, last Sunday. Do you even remember what happened a week ago? Where you were? Were you in church? Did you get to be in church? Or perhaps you were out and about doing something else? I was in British Columbia watching out for bears. No. A lot's happened this past week. A lot to be thankful for. Because no matter what happened this past week, we know that we're supposed to be looking for the hidden sources of gratitude. Tomorrow is, we call it Remembrance Day in Canada where I live. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. It's the day we consider the people who have given their lives and people who have served with all that they can to preserve and maintain the freedom that that little girl was talking about. People who are willing to sacrifice everything in order for us to be able to sit in this church and worship our God as we understand God and not the God of the the Medes and Persians. Not a golden calf. Not the God of the almighty dollar or commercialism or the me generation or the gods that are all around us, that is, the things that have people's attention and their focus, and which they serve before they serve anything else. All of us have to work on putting down that one god that we think is so important, which is our ego, our proprium, as the writings talk about it. Proprium meaning what is our own, what's proprietary to us, And it can easily become the first and last thing we think about when we wake up in the morning and go to bed at night. We need to fight against that, and the Lord's provided the freedom to raise our minds up above ourself and the things of the world in order to worship the true and living God. And as we approach Thanksgiving and think about gratitude to the Lord, the gratitude to be able to be lifted up above our base nature, our natural personality, our natural man, to be lifted up above that by the Lord in secret ways. And to fight against the anxiety that comes when we don't get what we want. So the Lord in chapter six of Matthew uses the term secret five or six times in the New King James Version, it was five times, and then I was reading out of the uh, Kempton Version, and it was six times, and I didn't examine to see which, which one was secret that wasn't listed in the other one. But six times, the Lord talks about doing things in secret. Have an attitude of gratitude, but don't show off about it. 
So he starts off that chapter by talking about when you, when you give your alms, that is, when you're serving your neighbor, when you're benefiting your neighbor, when you're giving and you don't have to towards the good of other people, do it anonymously. How hard is that? For some people, it's a lot harder than for other people. Some people want to be noted. Some people want their name on the plaque of the donor's wall. Is there something wrong with that? Depends on what your motivation is, isn't it? When they were building the cathedral in Bernathan, they made sure not to put up any plaques that said so-and-so gave this and so-and-so gave that and the stained glass window was a gift by so-and-so and the seat you're sitting in was a gift by so-and-so. I love that idea and I think it's been followed pretty much in the churches that have uh, grown up since that time and been built that we're not here to focus on other people's personality, especially not our own that we give our alms, we give our charity, we give and present to the Lord a gift to Him in thanksgiving, like the money that we have presented before the altar. It's given without a big fanfare, especially within your own minds, especially thinking you've done something good. Because as soon as you think that way, you've actually removed the good that can come into your heart and into your mind because you're taking credit for it. We then place ourselves outside of the stream of providence because the stream of providence is with those who attribute all things of good to the Lord. Otherwise, we're stealers, we're thieves, stealing from the Lord that which He has given to us. And so it says in the beginning of this chapter, give your alms and don't be a a big deal. Don't make a big deal of it. The one, not caveat, but the one idea that might give us a little bit of nuance for that is what's said about the angels in the other world, in heaven, the, 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 um, the, the princes or the people over the government of the societies in the other world, and the priests that are in the main priests of the societies in the world that says that they receive honors from the people because lots of times the people don't know how to really look up to the Lord or look up to the office without attaching it somewhat to the person. And so it says we, we do live in dignified houses. We do live better than the other people in the society because it's a sim symbol of the Lord being the center of our society and the Lord being the giver of all good things. So there can be that ability to give and set an example. Not to show off that you've given from the wealth that you have, but to state doing this is important. And yes, I'm going to give because by giving, places like this can be built. By giving, people who are poor can be helped. And you can set an example for your neighbor. The angels that are in the other world, the angels of heaven, set an example and allow that example to be seen by being robed in good clothing, by being in garb. People ask me, why do you, do you like to wear your, your, uh, your minister uniform? I said, I do. It's a cloak against my proprium in many ways. It's to say, what's going on here when I wear this robe is to represent the truth of the Lord's Word. It's not all about Michael. And that is uh, not to stand out and blow the trumpet before others, but to come up on chancel and wear the, the representation of the Lord's priestly office. We do take on that role, and we can take that role on appropriately. We do give alms, and we can give alms and people can see and know, and we can set a good example. But we don't do it because somehow by doing it, we're better people than others. That Arcana passage, 8478, makes it really clear. If we're doing good things, and the Lord's taking care of us, we give thanks to the Lord. Unruffled is our spirit. What's a ruffled spirit, anyway? 
Well, we, you might have been ruffled this week because you were anxious about how the election was going to turn out. And maybe your spirit became ruffled because things weren't going the way you wanted them to. Or maybe they ended up not going the way you wanted them to. Whether they did or didn't, according to the Arcana passage, please don't be ruffled. For you know, it says in the Arcana, that no matter what the outcome or the appearance in time, the Lord is leading towards good. And to be in the stream of providence is to let go of that anxiety and pray to the Lord in secret. And the Lord who will hear in secret will reward you openly. We don't always get what we want. It says very specifically whether we obtain the objects of our desire or not. A large percentage of people on one side and a large percentage of people on the other side, one side didn't get what they wanted. May their spirit be unruffled. May we turn to the Lord and place our trust in Him with outcomes such as today or this past week. So the Lord asks us in secret to pray. You don't have to project to uh, the whole world what you're looking for, what you're hoping for, what you're longing for. It's better if we privately and in confidence with people that we trust and love share what it is that we're praying for. And so we have a standard in our church never to promote one side or another of a political discussion. The church doesn't know. The priest doesn't know who's best for this country. Not as a church. Not as the priesthood. And this week I had a discussion, we, we've been discussing on the, on the clergy list, about how do we encourage our people to be very, very involved in the life of society, civil life, political life, while at the same time not saying, hooray, this candidate or that candidate won. That's what the church wanted. We don't do that because of what that little girl said today. You need to be left in freedom to decide for yourself who best you believe will be a leader. The story of Daniel is a good way to reflect upon that. Who's the best leader? The king, of course. The king who can be, oh man, did he get taken. His governors set him up and the king said, oh, sure, that's what we should be doing, uh-huh. Signed a little decree and made a little, you know, little rule about you can't worship anybody other than my, me and my statues. Oh, king, were you not thinking? Well, of course, that never happens today, right? We never have governors or leaders that really aren't thinking, right? <laughs> of course we do. And we will suffer through leaders and ourselves who don't always get it right. Yep. He didn't do anything wrong. Daniel was just, and the king really liked Daniel, had promoted him, and he got took. The king got, got, got conned, and he just trusted the Lord was going to take care of Daniel, but it stank, it says, it stank. And some of us can feel that way about political things or social things. This really stinks. We're allowed to have those reactions, and the Lord is keeping us alive by us continuing to breathe, and when we smell something that doesn't smell good, we should be saying to ourselves, this doesn't smell good, this stinks, and do our best to do what we can to provide for something better to come along. And the Lord took care of Daniel. Angels closed the mouth of the lions, and Daniel survived. He had done nothing wrong, and yet he got in trouble. That can often happen with us, can't it? Do nothing wrong, but you still get in trouble. You perhaps express your opinion about something. You're not doing anything wrong, but other people already have an opinion about that side or that side. Do we just not talk about things that are really important to us? Or do we really try hard 
to listen to what the other person has to say. It's extremely difficult in today's world. Because as you know, if you're on, I have my little phone up here, I turned it off. If you're on the phone and you have some sort of social network or some sort of feed, it knows what you like. Even if you don't hit like. And we can get into these silos or bubbles where we're constantly fed all the good things about this candidate or this product or this argument or this whatever. We don't hear a whole lot about that because it doesn't keep us clicking. When you go into your room, shut the door, and do what you need to do in private. Privacy is a really undervalued, uh, well, maybe it's not. Maybe you, maybe you really do value your privacy and know that pretty much today, somebody's listening all the time. Hey, Siri. Yeah, we're being listened to, we're being watched, we're being followed. Privacy, we must value. And we must make the decisions spiritually, morally, civilly, in private or with, with our full conscience and operation and not the influence of society or politics out there. So the Lord tells us not to make a big deal of it. Don't go out, go out onto the street and say, you know, put your sign on your lawn and say, I'm this, this, and this. You can do that, set an example if you want, but overall, spiritually speaking, we're better off if we don't make it a social virtue signaling about what we believe politically. We have to be very careful about that. Very careful. The priests and the church especially. We don't virtue signal about political candidates because you need to be left in freedom as congregants to choose one side or the other and know that it will be respected because you've done all you can to make informed consent, to have informed consent and use your freedom and rationality because that's where the stream of providence first flows in. In your freedom, which is the Lord's gift to you, and in your rationality, which is the Lord's with you, the Lord flows into them. And if they're somehow tampered with, your spiritual life is tampered with. Don't be anxious, the Lord says. This past week might have brought you some anxiety. Don't be anxious. The Lord commands you to be a bird watcher. How many bird watchers do we have out there? Nobody's a bird watcher. You're just afraid to raise your hand because you're, you're afraid it's going to be virtue signaling. It won't be. People like watching birds. How many people put up bird feeders? We like that. The Lord says, consider the birds because you're more valuable than the birds and the Lord's taking care of those birds. The Lord's taking care of you. How many people like gardening? It's the number one recreational activity in North America. So I guess there's a bunch of you who like gardening. Consider the lilies and the daisies and the, I can list off all those different flowers. Consider the trees. Consider the natural world. The Lord's taking care of it. Aren't you of more value than some daisies? Therefore, do not have anxiety about tomorrow. Let the things of tomorrow take care of themselves. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen.